hello y'all. So I got some requests to actually put these in a video, like featured in a video because I did a reel over on my Instagram where I tried on all three of the new Satin Kajal liners. This is like the summer release in these. She's coming out with a lot of stuff. I don't wanna say this is her summer release because like, Victoria Beckham Beauty is coming out with stuff rapid fire, but these came in the mail the day before they were released and I just found them to be really exciting. I love the Satin Kajal formula and these are wild shades for v VBB. I really love that she's just pulling no punches right now. So we're gonna be using at least one of these today, but if you do wanna see all of them on my eyeballs, that reel is over on Instagram and I am quite proud of her. I like how it came out and then, <sighs> We have a disappointing situation. I don't wanna like bum y'all out, but I thought that Makeup by Mario, the team over there was sending me all the blushes. That was kind of what I gathered from the email that they sent, but they were like, we're gonna send you some goodies, including the new blushes. And I was like, okay, well they sent me three blushes, two of which I had already bought. And then we have one shade here that is called Berry Punch that we're gonna try today. I might use the other two as well, but I definitely wanna give this one a shot today. They also sent me a couple of things that I have yet to try. So they sent me some shades in their yeah, Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum that I haven't tried before, Pink Glow and Blush Glow. And then actually they sent Mocha Glow over too, but I don't know where that went. They also sent over the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Colors, which are the like tinted lip glosses that I saw not do so well as far as reviews on the internet just in passing but they sent three of them over I have tried one and I think I liked it you know so I think maybe we'll probably use I don't know some amalgamation of those today and then also I'm apparently now on Oma's Radar which is very cool it's a brand that I'm always interested in they sent over a brand new bottle, which I've used this before, but you know, my memory is foggy. This is their Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation, but I do think that I'm going to try and use a dewier primer underneath it so that we're not ending up with too much matte in the soft matte department. And then I bought this, they sent me two other shades, but this remains the greatest shade ever. And this is their new reformulation of the Stay Woke Concealer in the shade T1. I mean, it is such a wildly good match that it like disappears into my skin. It's crazy. So gonna be doing that. I also have a powder from them, the Translucent Trip and Smooth Powder. I did buy their Hydro Blast Powder and it's just not for me. So maybe this one will be. And I also took some questions from y'all on Instagram. So let's go ahead and jump in. I have glitter on my lip. Get off of me. It's from the K-Beauty video and I swear y'all, I have not been able to get the mascara out from under my eyes and I have not been able to get the glitter out of my life. So it's gonna be a different way that we're doing the foundation today than I have been because we're working with a liquid foundation but I do wanna use something kind of dewy to start off with. Let's use my Ciate. This is just my trusty rusty, the Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. This is going to do double duty of giving me a little bit more of a dewy slippy finish and also helping the makeup wear a little bit longer. But I'm not trying to get like crazy wild high coverage today. So hopefully this foundation is going to allow for some flexibility and coverage. Y'all, I just straight up took a Q-tip with my Lano lips today and just like inside my nose. Like we're almost in summer and like my nose still hasn't completely healed on the inside from winter. I don't know if I'm cut out for this New Jersey business, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need to go home to Florida and just like check in with some humidity. So I have this in White Pearl T2N. I did go on Sephora this morning, you know, like you do when you're in this line of work. Yeah, let's get this really good and thin. I really don't want to build this up a lot. And I saw a new-ish looking bottle of Dior Backstage Face and Body. And I Googled around because I was like, wait, is this reformulated? And apparently it is. So I bought it and I actually finally bought the right shade. I've always been convinced that I was like a W in their line and I'm not, I'm an N. I ordered one N and we will see how it goes. This is a great shade match, isn't it? It goes on so easily. It really doesn't want to like have to build up too much. So I'm actually really glad that this is what I chose today. I have just been really appreciating very thin, effective makeup lately, you know, things that have enough coverage that I can wear them really thinly, because that seems to be, for me, the most guaranteed way to not have creasing underneath my eyes and in other places is to just make sure that the makeup is not super thick. It's always kind of the seesaw, right? Of like trying to get the finish that I want, the nice kind of dewy blurred finish without building too much product up on my skin. But like, that's just 
really nice. That's just really nice. That was two pumps and I didn't use quite all of it. So we do, we have, yes, you know, quote unquote soft matte, but put that primer on underneath and I think it helped immensely. Okay, now we have the concealer. Let's see if we got any, any questions so far. I just did a random AMA. <laughs> Favorite and least favorite tennis players. Well, there are very few like least favorites, I think. If y'all are unaware, I, I do enjoy tennis. I, I played tennis growing up. I was also a ball kid at, you know, like, um, not semi-pro, you know what I mean? When they would kind of tour through Tallahassee, <laughs> not exactly a master's destination, but I also just now in my adulthood really like watching it. And I would say that as far as like my favorite humans that like I've seen their personalities because you don't get to see their personalities all the time. And in the case of Rafa, like he doesn't have one. He, when he smiles, like he just, his face looks like it doesn't want to. He's like, you know, <laughs> he's like, oh God, they're gonna make me try and smile again. But my favorite to look at right now is Baratini. He's just nice to look at, although it seems that Whoever is dressing him cannot manage to tailor a suit for him, bless his little heart, because every time he shows up on a red carpet, it just looks like he picked up the wrong suit at the cleaners. And I'm just like, y'all, this is a paragon of male athletic achievement. You are putting him in something that looks like a zoot suit in 2023. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, he's quite beautiful to look at. I have no idea what his personality is like. Favorite male, probably, you know, just personality wise is Andy Murray. If you've ever seen interviews with him, I don't want to like call him some kind of hero, but he has had a couple of really great interjections that show that he is at least somewhat of a feminist, which makes me really happy. I enjoy watching him play. I've seen him play a couple of times at the US Open. I, hmm, I have, you know, conflicted feelings on even talking about someone like Djokovic. Everyone hates Djokovic. I like watching Djokovic play, but like his recent behavior behavior has just kind of soured everything for everyone. He's just a wild card and that is the nice way to put it. And I'm only talking about male tennis players right now. Why? Because female tennis players are in this like rapid circulation. We don't have as much of, I would say the, you know, the like people who stay at the top, <laughs> the way that we do in male tennis. So, you know, we've got kind of up and comers. We've got Sloane Stevens, Coco Goff. Everybody tells me I look like Sabalenka, but if like I ate Wheaties for like a year, you know, <laughs> like she's cool. <laughs> but she, I take it as a compliment. She's beautiful. And um, gosh, I mean, who doesn't love, like I've gotten to watch Venus play twice, but I've never gotten to see Serena play. And everybody loves Roger Federer. Like everybody loves Roger Federer. Duh, duh, what's not to love, you know? And if there is something not to love, please don't tell me. <laughs> Yeah, probably, I don't know. I mean, it's not that I don't like watching Rafa play because he is an impressive player, but like he makes me nervous, but he like always wins. So <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy watching him play because of the suspense. He's he's a French Open kind of guy. He's a clay court guy and I've never been to the French Open. So I've never gotten to see Federer play and I'm pretty sure he retired. Other than that, I mean, I'm just like, you know, here for the bear, here for the honey deuces, you know? I think that me and Natalie are gonna go together this year. We didn't realize that we both shared a passion, Natalie of my skin interest, that we both shared a passion for tennis. And so that will be fun, especially since she doesn't live in New York City anymore. She will probably take any opportunity to get back. Okay, so before I powder, I do wanna go in with this blush because, God, that is just really nice, isn't it? That is just really, really nice. That luminosity and the shade match. Okay, Oma. So I don't even know what, the, I don't even know what color this is. It's called the Berry Punch. And I'm guessing, oh my word, it's Berry Punch. Oh my word. Oh, <laughs> I'm hoping it's just really nice and sheer. The formula is so approachable. Yeah, we might end up with like Fjord's cheeks today for the first time in a long time, but it does pull something really nice from my lips there, doesn't it? So yeah. Let's do that before we put bronzer on or anything, right? We're just gonna do this in a different order because I want you to see the color of this before I have to do the inevitable damage control of trying to blend it into the rest of my face. But I have kind of this like natural rosiness happening on my cheeks right now that I'm just gonna chase that feeling. Yeah, we got contrast. I can't even express to you how gentle I'm being right now. There we go, cute. 
So you will watch and behold as everything turns pink on me because it's berry, but like it's gonna look like Smashbox O-Glow, you know, the pH adjuster. I just had one of those moments where I thought to myself, I was like, O-Glow, oh, that's what they meant? <laughs> Here I am like, I don't know, I was like 18, like but not, no, I was like 21 or something, buying that for the first time being like, oh, it's like color adaptive or whatever, it's not. Yeah, oh glow, I get it. So the thing that happens with colors like this is alone, they kind of look a little bit thin on me. It's just because it's like a high contrast shade, but we can fill in the blanks. It's okay, so let's talk about opacity real quick. When you have a color that is too sheer on fair skin, you have to kind of do the same thing you would do if you were trying to dye very, very blonde hair all the way back to a natural brown or black you need to fill in the gaps with all the colors that would happen if you were to lift that color back out, but just in reverse. And so if you are to like take black hair, black color hair, and lift it all the way to white, you're gonna run through a bunch of different phases of orange. You're gonna do like deep dark red, and then like a red orange, and then like a lighter orange, and then like that, you know, kind of rusty brassy color, and then you'll eventually, if your hair doesn't fall out, get to, you know, white. And so that's what you have to do if you want to like make something like this look not so like kind of odd and uncommitted on my skin. I need to fill this in with like the difference between my skin and this color because it's like this almost like jelly color on me that's just very translucent and beautiful if you have the melanin to go the distance, you know, it's gonna be less contrast on your skin. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm just not sure that this is like necessarily primarily meant for me. I have the Makeup by Mario. This is like the original blush stick, the cream blush, and I have it in Dusty Rose. I think this is gonna really do the trick because it does have quite a bit of actual opacity to it. And so it's like, if I build this up, I could probably, like if I get a larger swath of it on my cheeks here, and on my nose and on my everything. That berry color is just gonna look much more intentional. It's almost just like you're mixing them together on a palette before you put them on. But what we end up with is still the trueness of that kind of berry color. It just looks a little bit more at home because I'm like covering the distance with something fairly desaturated. So we do still need to do like bronzer and stuff. That's why everything does look kind of like two dimensional right now, but that is next. I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of this Uma powder and see if it ruins everything. And when I say ruins everything, I don't mean that like this is a bad powder necessarily. Look at what it does. That's pretty cool. It's like you twist this in order to make it come out and I already have. But what I mean is that Uma is primarily formulated for deeper skin tones. And I know that it's an overgeneralization to say that like deeper skin tones have need more oil control and fairer skin tones don't, but like that's kind of the system by which their formulations work. And so this might just be too matte for me, but we'll see. The other one just laid down too much product. I think the key is keeping everything really thin but this does come in several shades, you know? This is not just a translucent that's claiming to be universal. That's not something Oma would do. That's just not something Oma would do, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit mad. It's certainly not giving me what I like liked from that K-Beauty powder, which, you know, is a similar kind of appearance, but once it goes on, it's a velvety thing instead of just being very, very mattifying. Like underneath my eyes, that's just like pretty dry and flat. So I was really trying not to put too much on. Hopefully it kind of settles a little bit, but it's already, ugh, it's already giving me like crepiness under my eyes. So not ideal, not ideal, not ideal. I just, you know, not sure that I love that powder, but I really, really enjoy the foundation and the concealer. So let's do some bronzer and see if we have any other stuff to talk about here. Oh, that's a good one. How has your relationship with your body changed since having a baby? That's a great question because I did a post about this like a long time ago, right after I moved, I think. So like two years ago, probably. Time flies, doesn't it? I'm using the LH Cosmetics in always. I will trigger warn y'all just by telling you that like, I'm probably going to talk about like my odd relationship with food abstractly, no numbers or anything. I have had in the past a pretty strange and not always awesome uh, relationship with food. I think that I, you know, probably had an for most of my young adult and adult life up until I kind of realized it when I was like 25, 26. I was like, 
oh, you know, not everyone is just completely like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock in their brain all the time, like thinking about this stuff. So, you know, it was like a really beautiful ego death for me where I was like, wait, if I just stop counting calories, the sky doesn't fall. This is crazy. Yeah. And like been kind of unwinding myself after that, like ever since. And what's actually really funny, this is just kind of a side note, but people have asked me, they're like, well, how did you recover? Like, what was your, did you do inpatient or anything like that? And I'm just like, Tumblr? <sighs> like what? Yeah. I met a couple of really amazing people through this uh, one Tumblr, this girl Charlotte, Healing Charlotte. My friend Sophie, I met through, through her and like we got to just talking about our different struggles and stuff and I just like had a buddy to recover with. Like it was just really, really good to be able to just have one person that made me feel like I was, you know, not alone. And a community to go to too, to just kind of like, you know, read positivity and stuff. Because Tumblr was not exactly <coughs> known for that at the time. So it was very positive. I'm gonna do my contour also here. I didn't do any cream contour, but we're kind of past that at this point. So we're gonna go for the Poudre from Natasha Denerner. So anyway, getting pregnant I did completely dissociate from my body. Like it was really, really hard for me and not just in a gaining weight kind of way, but in a like, what in the heck am I looking at in the mirror kind of way? Like you just don't like, you feel like garbage, like physically, you know what I mean? Like you just absolutely feel like it, like you have a parasite, which because you do. And you've got this huge thing kicking around in your belly and everything just feels so foreign. It really does. It's like, it, honestly, I don't know how people are just like, I mean, obviously it just, it happens to them. Like it just happens to people differently. Some people have this amazing relationship with their body when they're pregnant. And like, I'm so glad that you have that. I did not. And so when I stopped breastfeeding because breast feeding and I did not get along very well. It made me not well in my head. When I stopped breastfeeding at five weeks, I started to see my body return, which meant like my boobs shrank, which was awesome because I have known my body my entire life, just the same way you have. It doesn't matter like whether you like having boobs or like, you know, I like having boobs or whatever. It's about the fact that like my body went from being something I didn't recognize back to being something that like I didn't think was gonna come back. And all my clothes started to fit again in different ways, but like, you know, my button downs didn't like have boobs to like go over anymore and stuff. And so that was like this moment where I was like, woo, okay, <sighs> like what's different, what's the same, but also like how has my, my mind changed? And I think that one of the best things that happened was that it felt like my favorite dress that had been too tight my entire life, like that I always felt like when I over ate or something like that, that like all my skin was too tight, you know? it finally felt like someone like let my favorite dress out by like two inches or something. And I just, it's like all of the like ways that my skin had loosened. I mean, I can't prescribe it to anybody. Don't go get pregnant for that reason. But like, it made all the difference in the world. I was just like, oh my God, when I eat, I don't feel like I'm gonna just like burst, you know? It just, everything just had a little more give to it. And I don't even know if that's like something that people can relate to. It was just, it was really nice. And then after I got off my antidepressants recently, cause that, like it made my body kind of hold on to a little more weight. A lot of that weight kind of like, you know, I fell back off again because I am kind of prone to that anyway. And now I feel more like myself than I ever have in the best way possible. So yeah, I think that also, what's the next step? Cause I'm just sitting here talking. Oh, let's do some like contour things on my eyes because we're gonna be mainly going in with these eyeliners or at least one of them. So I just wanna do something like pretty and cute and sparkly that's not like really over the top. I know y'all don't want me to use the Victoria. Well, you know, I should use the Victoria Beckham eyewear because I'm gonna be using Victoria Beckham liners. So I'm gonna do what I want because what I had like to use right now is those Victoria Beckham eyewears. So yeah, I'm gonna be using trench and pecan here and doing a very, very typical kind of like basic contour structure for myself before we go in with those new liners. So the other thing that changed is very mental and that is that you just, I just, I don't wanna speak for anybody else, but I just became so grateful for what my body is capable of. Like every time I interact with my kiddo, I'm just like, look at, I made you in my like every single time, like people kind of grimace at me sometimes when I tell stories about him because you know, the kids are cringy and funny, but like, it doesn't matter to me like what it is that my kid is doing. It's just the fact that he's here doing anything. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's like that last line in the King of Carrot Flowers from Neutral Milk Hotel. They say like, how strange it is to be anything at all. Like it's just incredible that like he used to not exist. I made him in my belly and now he's sticking toys in his belly button. You know what I mean? Like it's just incredible. It's the coolest thing in the world. Like, I don't know. And it has also led me to the conclusion that I try and like advertise to people as often as I possibly can. Like I can't speak for any other parents out there, but the way that becoming a parent made me feel translated in a really great way to the way I feel about myself in the sense that, and this has nothing to do with like body image or anything, this is just life. But you realize that like this human doesn't have to do anything in order to earn your love. They just have to exist. By virtue of the fact that they exist, they are, nothing but potential and absolutely perfect in your eyes and not that they can do no wrong but that they don't have to go accomplish anything in order to earn your love they just are your love you know and i had this moment this very emotional moment in therapy where i realized like if i feel like that about my kid then that's how my mom feels about me because that is how my mom feels about me she's like a really really excellent mother like she's just incredible and i had like this humbling moment where i was like trying to find in my life at that point self-worth outside of my output where you know we have this generational neptune and capricorn for like 14 years that you know i'm smack in the middle of and it really makes us tie our self-worth to our ability to kind of like show up in the world as like productive citizens and i I really, y'all know, like struggled with that, with productivity addiction and things like that. And now I do feel like I thrive in a pace of, you know, getting a lot done, but I don't derive my entire self-worth from my, you know, ability to like check things off of my to-do list or get recognition from outside sources and things like that. And it all came from this realization that's like, my kid is perfectly worthy of love regardless of whether he goes out and accomplishes things or just sits here in my lap for the rest of his life. <laughs> Hypothetically, you know? And then that like, that means that I and all of us are worthy of love and worthy of being here outside of our ability to go produce, you know? So that was just an incredible lesson that I hadn't counted on happening, but parenthood did that to me, which is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so in that time, I did my very typical shadow and light situation that I'm just totally in love with. I'm really, really into those two products. I cannot wait to like finish that eyewear stick, you know, and just feel how it feels to know that I love something that much. So I, my inside Expo that I didn't do for my reel because I just wanted you to see, I kept having to clean it off to like put more eyeliner on kind of thing. But I want to use like a really pretty like sheer, where's that ColourPop eyeshadow I like so much? All right, here's what we're gonna do. I can't find Ritz, but this is a fantastic substitute. This is Boy Tears from Hindash. You can sheer this out as much as your heart desires and get something really, really like soft. It's just a little bit peachy. I mean, you hardly need any, 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 and it's just so pretty. And I could also then take something tiny and put it on my inner corner. And we're gonna just build that ever so slightly more right there in my inner corner. Pretend that I'm one of Hindash's lovely models. Someday, someday, someday I'm gonna go to the UAE and just show up at his doorstep. Cool, love that for us. Okay, the question is, <laughs> What color am I gonna put on my eyeballs today? I think that blue was really the star. And like, I also think that like, we already have so much berry on my face. Like, I feel like this would almost disappear. Y'all were pretty impressed with the green. So I think that we're gonna go with the green today for just like a really pretty graphic liner. So let's do it. I also love kind of the sparseness of this look, the way that there's like a lot of negative space. You can still see my freckles and stuff, which is not what I was expecting from that Oma foundation. I was expecting full coverage and like, it's actually, really, really gorgeous. Not that full coverage isn't gorgeous. It's just more what I wanted today. And I need a, I need a brush. There it is, brush friend. As I was saying, there's a lot of kind of negative space where I feel like it looks like my skin is showing through in a nice way. Maybe we'll draw in some extra freckles or something. Look at these. Okay, so if you are unfamiliar with the Satin Kajal formula, it is 
satin. It is so beautifully silky when you put it on. It's just so easy to use and you think that that means it's gonna just kind of stay soupy and it doesn't, it dries down. It's so nice. Look at how it just glides on. I also think that it helps that I used creams and liquids on my eyes instead of powders because they dry down and they give a nice kind of surface for this to not pick anything else up. <sighs> Green on brown eyes. It's just so wearable, which I think is surprising because it's like, they're very bright, but like there's just something about the choices that they made with these colors. And can I just say from like a veteran's standpoint, somebody who's like kind of been doing this for a minute at this point, I rode the Glossier wave for years, you know, of just like following their new releases. I was a Glossier rep starting in 2017 before I even properly started my channel. And they came out with Glossier Play pretty closely thereafter, maybe in like 2018. What is that? And why? And for whom? And they felt like they needed to put out an entire other line, it being called Glossier Play, because Glossier itself was so like skin tone native, I guess. You know, most of it was just kind of supposed to be like barely there, no makeup, makeup kind of stuff. But like, I still, from pretty much everybody I talked to about it that was, you know, there for the unveiling of it, they were just like, why did it need to be its own line? Why couldn't they just make it regular Glossier? You know, it didn't need to be its own company. And I'm just like happy to see VB being like, yep, and here are bright colors in something that we have never done bright colors in. If we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. And they are doing it right. Everybody will be dancing and be feeling all right. Everybody will be dancing and be doing it right. Y'all, I cannot not dip into my music brain every time I give myself a little hook. There we go. Ooh, I love it. Also, inadvertently, I'm combining two of my favorite things, which are pink and green. I love pink and green together. Like just the way that they make each other pop because as far as skin tones are concerned, they are technically opposites. Let's go with some. The Victoria Beckham is like very quickly just like taking over my entire routine, okay? If she puts out a foundation, I don't know, it's higher than a 50-50 chance that it would be my new favorite foundation, you know? Using the bronzer for everything that I need. It's about the exact same color as Trench. And so using that to pull that line out so that we end up using some more of my real estate here. But again, like I just love that like the freckles show through and everything. Let's do some of the pink blush now that I located it from Makeup by Mario because I don't know. I don't know, why not y'all? So yeah, this is barely blushing. This is not the pinky pink. This is more of like the nudie pink. And it's also nice because we put powder on on top and I feel like it did kind of obscure. And so I wanna kind of pull that little strawberry moment back in. That's kind of what this is with the freckles and the pink and the green. My skin is just giving summer strawberry vibes. My kid ate like a half a pound of strawberries last night. Like in like the 20 minutes before bed, he just kept making us cut up more strawberries. He's a fiend. Okay, let's browse and mascaras. And I think I've taken two questions. <laughs> so then we will talk lips and maybe take one more question before we're done. Doing it right. Everybody will be dancing and be feeling all right. Everybody will be dancing and be doing it right. <laughs>
definitely giving like cute summertime vibes. Like I got inspired to just kind of start adding little highlights here and there to really just like finish the mood. Do I feel like I need a little bit of something pink in my eye look? A little bit, a little tiny bit. So I'm actually just going to take some of my Dior Rosewood here. Yeah, and we'll just kind of like hide it in there a little bit, you know? And that's gonna just add a necessary amount of depth. Also though, we have the ability to do just a little bit of, just a little bit, just a little, just a little bit of like the pink one. I mean, why the freak not? Just a little bit. Stop it, it's just a little bit. <laughs> Me forgetting I have a mole there. That's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Look, I had a vision, okay? I'm not even sure you can see that. You can't really. It's just, you know what? I'll sleep better tonight knowing that that's there. Anyway, <laughs> cute. You know what? I love it. So the only thing left here to do is pick a lip and I actually do also want to spray myself with something. Yeah, let's just use Fix Plus here. I want a nice dewy finish with something I can count on. Okay, here's, here's the thing, right? As soon as I put a lip on, this is gonna go makeup, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, sure, everybody knows I'm wearing makeup right now, but I love what the eyes are doing. I love what the cheeks are doing. And then as soon as I put one of these lips on, everything is just going to go intentional, you know, instead of effortless. So let's swatch. These are actually, these colors are okay. I mean, I, I knew they were gonna be okay. Like I know that, you know, he's makeup by Mario. Mario Divadavadavadavadavadil. Divadavadovich, terrible khaki, awful. He knows what he's doing with color and he does really beautiful, subtle things with color. So that one is cool pink. This one is barely pink. Yeah, you're not kidding. And uh, this one is called Soft Blush. Okay, and then I'm gonna swatch the volumizing lip guys because I, I have this one in nearly mauve. This is Blush Glow. And these are just a little bit less pigmented and they have a nice plumping quality to them that I like, okay? Some people don't like minty stuff. I love minty stuff. Wait, I think this one might be the one. Yeah, it's clear. It's like not clear, It's but it's like a really light pink and that's pink glow. Let's freaking go. Because, wait, I need to make sure it doesn't have, I don't think it has a pH adjuster. It's not turning like hot pink. Yes. <laughs> Y'all are like, dang it, khaki. That is not what the plan was, okay? You know what? I want this to be a cute look. Oh man. Ah, boop. It's trying to break off on me warm in this room. That's the one. Who is she? Mm, and then comes the mint. The mint of it all. Oh babeses. We done did something pretty cute here. Let me brush my hair. The, the Fix Plus starts to make everything look kind of sad. <laughs> sad and saggy. Maybe. Do we need a little tiny bit of powder? You know, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of different products to look like you didn't try. I also think that like this is incomplete unless I put some white liner in my waterline here. It's not white white. It's like a kind of like peach color, but this is the VB one. I just feel like this is such a graphic look. It's gonna help everything pop. Why do I feel like it's not enough blush? Cause it's not, cause it's just not. So I'm gonna use some of this on my cheeks and you can't stop me. You can't stop me. I know you wanna reach your hand through the screen right now and stop me, but you can't. So yeah, this is the Dior. Rosy Glow in Rosewood. It went on a little thick right there. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. The whole point is to try something new and not end up with the same old, same old face of makeup, you know? And I think that we accomplished that today. <laughs> it's giving strawberries and I'm obsessed. Feeling V cute, V cute. Okay, so I said we'd do one more question. This is a good one, Glitter Fallout. Love, what other VBB products do you recommend for a brand newbie? And it's actually interesting because like someone else just was like, hey, I have $80 burning a hole in my pocket. Hypothetically, like what is it that you're gonna go buy? Like what's the thing that you know you think that would be a great thrill if I kind of already have everything I need and I just want something special? And I was like, Victoria Beckham. Like the brand has me in a chokehold right now. So for you, Linda, Glitter Fallout, you know, knowing that she does love some like bright colors and also some just beautiful textures, 
I would absolutely recommend going for the lid lusters. They're so good. They're so just like beautifully unctuous and glittery and I'm going to just grab one and show it to you. As I was saying, Victoria Beckham has only recently really moved into bright colors, you know? And so these aren't necessarily going to give you that, but they will give you gorgeous, gorgeous texture, high performance. And I really do appreciate all the, like the nuance of these shades. Okay, that's chiffon and tea rose. Like those are, those are so chill. That's why I love them so much. But like, let me show you mink. Mink was my first one that I ever got. Everybody seems to think that this is like, you know, this beautiful, perfect, like bedroom eyes brown. And I'm just like, this is a cool taupe with like almost a like silver shift on it. It's just incredible. It looks like an oil slick. It's very hard for me to wear. It's just a lot, but there's a blue one. There's a silver one. There's a black one. They're just awesome. They're really like the formula is just off the charts. Ridiculous. It's so beautiful. I always feel so gorgeous when I wear these and I do love, especially for me, the person who's not particularly daring when it comes to a one and done shadow. I love that like, starlight and chiffon and velvet and stuff exist because they are easier for me to wear. And oh, other than that, I think that I would probably choose a posh gloss. Yes, I would. I just pulled this one out because I I think I've thrown all of my other ones in purses at this point. This is poolside. And when the clear one came out, I was like, it's a lip gloss. You know what I mean? But it like took me a minute to realize it's kind of the best wearing lip gloss I've ever had because it doesn't ever give you the white ring of death. And it just gives you that gorgeous like 90s pout, which you would expect from Posh Spice. And then they came out with shades and bikini is my be all end all lip gloss of life. Poolside is a great contender for deeper skin tones to achieve a very similar kind of like muted nude on the lip. This is so good. I've recently fallen in love, okay. I've recently fallen in love with Picante, which is like that gorgeous desaturated kind of peach color. And I just can't say enough about them. They're so beautiful. And I mean, all of her packaging is just great. It's just great, it's glass, you know, it's just so gorgeous. So yeah, I mean, I live for Victoria Beckham's stuff right now. She just, I can't get enough of it. I, it's just everywhere, it's all around me. Ah, I love it so much. And it's just like always is so reliable. It makes me so happy. It's just like, talk about a brand that sparks joy and has from moment one for me, when they first came out in 2019, when I was doing clean routine 2019, timing is everything. They really just like struck while the clean beauty iron was hot. And she has just continued to stick to her proverbial guns and making the most considered formulas in the most beautiful colors. And I just have yet to be disappointed disappointed, you know, overall. So that was my release of the year in 2019 was Victoria Beckham Beauty. And she just continues to occupy more and more and more space in my routine for a very good reason. So that was a great question, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for submitting that. So yeah, let's jump through the products real quick. I'll just tell you my, my thoughts going forward on them. So I've used this before, the Say What Foundation from Uma, but it was literally three years ago and I have no idea what I thought about it at the time. It was probably great, but putting it over the dewy primer was a game changer. It's just so nice. I think that it looks fantastic and it feels really good. It's crazy lightweight on the skin. It's not too much coverage. I think it's beautiful. This new reformulation of the Stay Woke Concealer, y'all know I love it. It's a lot creamier. It's a good amount of coverage. And like I said, T1, wildly good shade match, like ridiculously good shade match. I don't mind having to use eyeshadow to like brighten my eyes. I don't need like that white circle around my eyes, you know? So the powder was a miss for me because it's just over mattifying. That's not a dig on a formula as far as I'm concerned. It's just about what kind of powder it is, you know? Like if you need oil control, then you want something that's a little bit more mattifying and it's very, very pretty in that respect. But like, you know, I'm just gonna probably go towards either the cloud set or my house labs, wherever that one went, it crashed onto the floor somewhere. The house labs I have been really back into lately. <laughs> really enjoying that one lately. I'm just not a good person to judge a powder like this because unsurprisingly it is quite mattifying. It's quite a setting powder. I mean, we got to see this new color. I mean, they're new to me, they're all new, but 
berry punch. This is clearly for deeper skin tones. I think it's beautiful, but I have to do a lot of work to get it to work, you know? And I ended up with, what, four different blushes on my face today, so that should tell you all that you need to know as far as, like, if you're my skin twin, whether or not you're gonna get your money's worth out of something like that. I would stick to the fairer shades. The VB liners! I mean, I'm pretty clear on how I feel about them at this point. It just falls right in line with the Victoria Beckham vibe right now, where I just feel like they are bursting with good ideas. They're just in the zone at the moment. So again, excited to see, you know, more from them. I haven't tried the contour sticks yet. That's something that I definitely want to try. And I think I want like a lighter shade in the eyebrow pencils to really give like a good review because I think I like them so far, but I ended up with two shades that are both too deep. There is more to be had in the Victoria Beckham space, but these are really, really lovely and excellent. The one I'm wearing today is Sour Apple. The other two shades are Electric Blueberry and cherry blossom. And as far as this lip, I'm really glad that they did send me one that's just basically clear because I think that it's what coordinated with the outfit the most, you know what I mean? The whole vibe. We will find occasion to use the more pigmented lips in the future, I'm sure, but I'm really excited about how this turned out today. It's, it's giving me like cutie summertime vibes. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, you should subscribe while you are here. I would really appreciate that. I will put a video up here for you to watch next. If you liked this one, I hope, I hope you like it. And I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.